Hello and welcome to the Genuine Learning Blog. My name is Melissa Galasso and I am excited to be with you today to continue our conversation on the update to the conceptual framework, uh, talking about our new chapter, chapter five, recognition and derecognition. Uh, so this chapter is obviously based on the topic, going to cover recognition and derecognition criteria for when an item should be incorporated or removed from a set of financial statements. Now, this is not a new concept um, and so let's take a look here. Um, this was issued in August of 2023, and the concepts for recognition were originally in uh, concept statement number five, which covers measurement. Uh, and so a lot of times we talk about recognition and measurement as sort of one thing. Um, but what we decided to do here, or what FASB decided to do, honestly, <laughs> is uh, they decided to break it out and have recognition and derecognition be its own chapter um, as we go through this. And so um, in the statement of financial accounting concepts number eight, chapter five, we're going to address recognition and derecognition as part of just the overall conceptual framework update. So we talked last week about the update uh, related to the reporting entity. Uh, this is something that the FASB started and then stopped for a little while and then restarted. And so we're starting to see some project uh, process, uh, hmm, uh, some progress, there we go, progress being made uh, as we go through it. So what is recognition here? So as we look at some of the considerations. Uh, recognition is the process of incorporating an item in financial statements of a reporting entity, which again, we defined last week as an asset, liability, equity, revenue, expense, uh, expense, loss, or investment by or distribution to owners. And we call those elements, right? So first you have to meet the definition of an element. And then recognition is the process of incorporating it in the financial statements. Um, and when we talk about recognition, that is being both words and numbers. Um, showing up in the financial statement totals. So that's different than disclosure, which you know has words and numbers, but is not in the actual financial statements. Um, and so uh, when we're talking about recognizing, we're talking about them in the financial statements themselves. So you recognize an asset and then you can de-recognize an asset when it's sold, for example. And so for an asset or liability, recognition involves recording the acquisition or incurrence of the item and later changes in the item related to measurement included changes that result in the removal of it. Um, so if you put an asset on the books, right, that is recognizing the asset. So if you purchase an asset or you uh, complete the, um, the build out of an asset, right, you're going to meet the requirements for recognition. Disclosure of an amount uh, by another means is not substitution for recognition, right? Recognition, when you meet the recognition criteria actually gets included in the financial statements. And so what makes something, what meets those recognition criteria? So an item and its financial statement uh, information must meet three criteria in order to be recognized in the financial statements, obviously subject to the cost benefit uh, as well as materiality considerations. So the first one is definitions. The line item has to meet the definition of an element. So it has to be revenue, expense, gain, loss, asset, liability, right? As we go through it. So it has to meet one of those. And then measurability, the item is measurable and has a relevant measurement attribute. So we have a number that we can put with it. And then the third criteria in order to recognize an item is faithful representation. The item can be depicted and measured with faithful representation, right? So it's a, a it's something that we are able to rely on as we go through it. And so um, well, a couple, uh, last year, um, in August of 2022, I wrote a book um, on nonprofit accounting, and it was very interesting having to explain the concept of recognition in sort of layman's terms. And so I sort of wish some of this was available back when I wrote the book to help explain, you know, what we talk about when we say you recognize something in, right? People are like, you recognize something like, oh, I recognize that as a, you know, an, uh, an apple, right? I recognize it. And they're like, no, 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 recognize meaning that you're incorporating it into the financial statements. And so um, I'm really excited about this. This is, I think, something that adds a little bit of value. Um, but they didn't just address recognition. They also included derecognition because things come off, right? Whether it's being sold or whether it's no longer in use, right? Um, and so derecognition is the process of removing an item from the financial statements of a reporting entity as an asset liability or equity. And this should occur when an item no longer meets one of the recognition criteria. And so we would then take it off the books. So an item could um, should not be continued to be recognized if it does not meet the definition of an element, because obviously in that scenario, it would violate the recognition criteria. Uh, and so as we look at this, derecognition is taking it off the books. 
All right, so that is our two-part series on changes to the concept statements. Uh, we will return to our normally scheduled uh, what's going on in the a a world uh, from a more uh, coming down the pike perspective. But I thought it was important to really talk about some of these changes because they often go unnoticed. Uh, concept statements aren't authoritative. They're really only used by the FASB in designing future um, ASUs. But if you think about it, um, these future ASUs are based on these changes. And so uh, these changes are important for people to be aware of. So I want to thank you guys so much for joining me. And I hope to see you on a future blog. Have a great day, guys. Bye-bye.